Welcome everyone back to the Shiftcast. We are on episode six. I just got back from Walmart, hit the grocery store. Uh, Michael, Big. what you got rocking today? Well, you know, just clocked in at the old nine to five. Uh, you know, I'm a corporate a, weapon, you know? A I, corporate, uh, okay. Listen, I wake up every day and I feed other people's families, okay? They Ooh. need me. The shareholders <laughs> need me. Okay. The shareholders. Thank you. The, shareholders, the shareholders. The shareholders count on me to provide food on their table. So, you know, right. I just did that. It's um, the American dream. It is. Yeah, exactly. Provide for the shareholders. That is it. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, just late for you, you know, over they, there. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm the poor European who has to record it at midnight. But other than that, <laughs> I'm doing great. This is all natural light. It's so sunny. You know, European. Sunny. Yeah. Europe. Time in Europe. Why don't you get on a real time zone, bro? <laughs> right, right, right. U U T C. Like that's not real. That's right. You made that the up. The fake region. The fake region hasn't played yet, so we're not going to talk about them. But the Close. real regions were all playing this weekend, and we'll start with the okay. NA regional recap. One of, I mean, in my opinion, one of the most exciting, and and I would say like um, cleanest performances for the region. I think. If you look across the board, we had some of the teams play some of their best Rocket League. Gen G, Omelet, TSM. We did have G2 falter a bit. Um, you know, not as clean as before. But I think in OG as well. All in all, I think the, the region is elevating as we go. So we'll, we'll start at the top. I mean, Gen G take down G2. They stop the full sweep of the split. And a, an interesting piece that I know Shift tweeted out. First killer has ruined it for G2 both times. First on phase. And now here on Gen G, he is the the triple crown um, thorn, killer? I guess. The killer. The killer. The triple yeah. crown killer. That's right. Yeah. But, well, but you what, know. Hoodie, what do you think? Is it really Gen G being the killer, or has G two kind of become a little bit predictable, maybe for the rest sure. of the teams? Um, you know, I I'm classic fence sitter. I think it's a little bit of both. I do ah. think that G two, I do think G two played a little bit poor this Filthy event. Centrist. I don't even want to call it poor because it's just poor by their standard, right? Like it wasn't bad Rocket League. Um, they like they swept in the semifinals, and I thought I thought they played G uh, Gen G fairly well in the finals. But I do think Gen G leveled up tremendously, and I think that is more indicative of what we saw in event one and two. G2 is definitely a good team, but I don't think what we saw them do to Gen G was the standard. Like, I don't think that's right. I think Gen G was weak in those first two events, specifically against G2. Um, so, yeah, I think this Gen G that we saw, much more of the standard, you know, the, the status quo that we should be expecting from them. First killer was firing on all cylinders. Abjack was so much more confident. You know what I mean? I think those first two events, you just saw some, like, very out-of-character mistakes from him. Um, and, and as a unit, they looked much better. And I think that's kind of what we should expect moving forward is a, a battle between those two, um, either in grand finals or, or semis. It's almost like someone on this, on this shift cast has said that Gen G could be the best team in an A. Now, who would say that? <laughs> who would said be, that? It would have to be someone with such foresight as to not overreact <laughs> to early, sure. early results and really just look at the, you know, really grind the R all 22. Um, and that's me, of course. Ah, uh, but listen, oh, uh, I, I couldn't I'm tell. not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna gloat yet. Okay. Yet. Okay. Because, you know, it's still two, one, uh, in, in regional championship favor for G2. Yep. And I, I, I will say G2, they just look like they, like you could tell there was a hunger there in the first two regionals that just maybe wasn't there because they had already clinched. Maybe thinking like they're kind of looking ahead. Um, that series they played against Omelette was one of the most North American series of all time. Just like full yes. net sitting for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so you know, weird they, that it was actually effective. Yeah. To, I, don't I mean, NRG like literally won NA events for like a year and but, a half just like doing that, I, I, but with I, Justin. I'm not refuting that, but I feel like everything has leveled up since then. I, I Like I'm just surprised that they were able to... Like use a strategy like that effectively. It feels like you can't do that anymore. But Omelet well, did it too. G two were a little off. They weren't. They, yeah. The team play wasn't there. Like it was the first two ones. Uh, and you sure. listen, prime prime Veloce ball season eight That's Veloce right. ball. You know it never yeah. dies. Okay, it's you know Casio. I mean they got far with it yeah. for a team like they did, yeah. with Casio. They went far. Top eight lost to Arsenal yeah. and typical. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. First killer, man. What is there to say about the kid? It. I would. Yeah. I'm gonna. You know. I. I really agree with you guys. I think for the first two events, it felt like first and Jack were mm -hmm. trying too hard to not get in each other's way and like 
let right. the other one cook and like as a result neither were cooking and they just sure. like they were like so hesitant to just like let play the way they wanted to and it really felt like there was a i felt by the first series G, g2 gen g i was watching i was like okay they there's some they figured something out where both of them are playing better um i mean the stat i think i believe was that first killer has now wrapped up his ninth straight split online as na's number one shift rating leader yep. um so three years in a row as the best statistically performing Holy player damn. in North hey. America. It's not real. He's not a real human being. He's a robot. It um, has to be. And so, and you know, when you have a player like that, the key is simply to, you know, let him cook. And Jack did a great job yeah. playing first man this week. I thought Chronic, uh, you know, he's been playing well all split. I think he's been their best player overall. Um, but he he did quite well and 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 was playing off of first killer really well. Um, I think it's I think Gen G2 is better than they than they showed this week. But sure. I think it's going to be a lot closer because to me, uh, I mean, we spoke about it, I think maybe two weeks ago, where I said, you know, G2 probably has the, maybe has the best player and, and probably has the best system. But even if you have both, when the be- if the other team has a guy who's just peeking out of his mind, uh, you know, you could still lose. And it felt like that was part of it. Um, I'm excited to see them at the major. But yeah, I mean, I'm just happy that the Gen G that I thought was going to exist actually yeah. exists. And I'm not. I, I am too. Like. Try. We we, we all see. win when there's good com- competition like that, you know what I mean? So G2 right. sweeping those first couple of events was like, I mean, yeah, that's exciting. But, I mean, we saw the narrative too. Like, they're they're not going to get a, a ton of credit for it because mm. we'll just look at the rest of the region as a little bit weaker. So, yeah, I, I think um, Gen G stepping up a bit is good for all teams. But let's bounce to our next two teams that clinched for the major. Obviously, those two are in. And then we had... Luminosity Gaming and OG Esports grabbed those final two spots. And wow. I mean, OG Esports start the split 16th, 0 and 3. And then they roll into the second event and they lose their first two matches in Swiss. And then something clicks. JNAP. And they just turn it around on a dime. What a bounce back. Yeah. Come tweeted about it. He is the only player who managed to win a regional and not right. make the major last season mm-hmm. and then now get last place 16th in a regional <laughs> and still make the major i don't know That's how so he does silly. it i don't know what he does but it's <laughs> it's incredible i mean we were picking those four the four spots and especially that four spot was really up mm-hmm. in the air uh, yeah. last week and we had dignitas being a so someone with a, a good chance to make it in yeah uh, M80, Space, Space Station, Station. Mm-hmm. maybe even Pirates on the Boat. And look at yeah. OG surprising us all. I think the thing that's most impressive, and, I, and this is just, I, if you if anyone comes to my streams, they'll know, I, I just love talking about the mental side of the game. I think it's just a very underrated aspect of competition. You know, Having someone and a team that has like a competitive mentality where failure doesn't deter them. You know, It motivates them even. Um, and I think that is a huge part of why OG was able to succeed. They've got a very mature, a definitely an older and experienced team. And, you know, a lot of times we're going to look at that and we're going to see, especially from community standpoint, we're going to look at that and we're going to see 0-3. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe they don't have it anymore. You know, maybe it's time. Maybe the sticks are, you know, on the way to the shelf. But they were having none of it. And, and there's, I mean, immense pressure. Like they just got signed by a gigantic org. And we know there's been a ton of buzz about how this new system, you know, it's just very, it's very difficult to remain consistent. You, you know, there's absolutely nothing guaranteed. And so I think uh, incredible, incredible mental fortitude and resilience from that team to claw themselves back into the top four. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they, they're, they're old and wise, you know, you know, they're not old <laughs> and, you know, they're kind of like the dads of NA. And you know what, the, you know what dad likes to do? Dad likes to cut the grass. Dad likes to cut the grass. We saw OG and LG bring out what may be a new marginal meta this this weekend, which is the grass boost. It allows you to not be able to kind of see certain things when you're in the air. It keeps you a little more discreet. So my question to you guys is, is was the grass boost a meme or is it the meta? I mean, Nolly yes. explained it uh, in the interview that it was not a meme, that it was something they saw uh, Luminosity do and they copied because indeed you do manage to 
avoid the opponents seeing your boost all the time. If you're far, far away, if you're up in the air, that grass is hardly noticeable. So if, even if you're not going for the ball, if you're going for boost in the back, those players, you, you bet they are taking notes uh, notes of where the other boosts mm. are, uh, what the levels of, of boosts are for their opponents, even though they can't see it. So if you can manage to kind of hide that somewhere, then that's actual meta. And look at that. Rocket League players touching grass. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it said it couldn't be As, done. Uh, so I, I, I came from the traditional sports world. Um, you know, I didn't really play a whole lot of games growing up. And I, I went to school to be a coach. I got my little degree back here. It's just a decoration at this point. But the world that I come from, it's like any any possible thing you can use to help yourself win, sure. you're going to do it. No question. And Rocket League has not been that way. In fact, many times trying extra hard has been viewed as cringe. And... So I don't even, I mean, I, I couldn't care any less about grass boost or what it looks like or whatever else, but the indication, you know, the implication of these players doing that is what I'm so excited about. We've got teams at actually implementing consistently kickoff strategies. Two, three years ago, that's cringe. Why are you doing that, right? And I'm, and I'm not even talking about in ranked. I'm talking about in competitive play. Like I used to coach a team and we... We used to do all these things. We would use party boosts because it tilts our opponents. We would use the cat engine noise because it tilts our opponents. Dude, if, if, it's, if it's legal and you can do it and it's not against the rules and it can help you, even if it's 1% of the time and it can help you win a game, why would you not do it? I don't understand that. Yeah. And so I see these guys trying the grass boost and I love it I, because, again, it's the indication that we're entering – and I knew this was coming. It was going to happen as the esport and competition existed longer and longer. But it just shows that players and teams are now willing. They're in the headspace where it's like, by any means necessary, whatever I can do to win, I will do. Competition and is so strong. It, that's right. It's so strong. Now, I will make sure to put the asterisk here within the rules. Of course. Because we'll touch on this later. There was something that some teams did that was outside of the rules to try to get themselves in a position. But I, we're, we're talking about boost here, something that is well within the rules, part of the game. It's the same with demos, right? Like early, and this is a long time ago, but yeah. people used to complain and whine about demos. It's part of the game. It's a, it's, it's a very the mechanic, effective core part mechanic of the game. Of the game yeah. it's a, that's right, a core mechanic. So yeah, I, I love it. And, you know, and it's demos. not so much about the specific boost, but it's just about the implication. Like teams are hungry to win by any means necessary, and I love that. About the demos as well, it was Com who really put the demos on the map yeah. by seeing a place for them that could really disrupt their mm. opponents mm -hmm. and just completely destroyed their play style. So yeah. it suits a team like OG that they're one of the one of the teams pioneering this new <laughs> meta. That's I, right. I don't I it didn't surprise me that the two teams that I guess oh, no. quote unquote figured it out were yeah. You know, a team with with Rettles on it and a team with Nolly on it because they've always had a really Bro, really strategic cerebral look at at the game. The LG team has two coaches, Raw Greg and Kevpert. And okay, listen, y'all y'all are gonna think that I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Kevpert used to use I don't know what the car's name, maybe Samurai, but he used to use a car that was very flat. Yeah. Because yeah. it would with the right color or decal or whatever, it would almost blend in with the grass, and so you're like a little snake slithering. That's I'm telling you, if there is if there's an individual in Rocket League that is thinking about That's the literally anything, yeah, any advantage that they can gain, it's it's those minds right there. So I saw, in fact, I replied to a tweet. Um, somebody was saying like, "Is this a meme? Are the players goofing?" And I was like, "No, no, no, not no. not these it teams. Makes if sense. it was an, if it was if it was a young team that didn't have a coach and they're using silly stuff, like maybe, but no, not not that team. They're they're, they're mean, looking for a competitive edge. I, I ah. think that we'll see a lot of a lot of teams start to use it. Uh, as as soon as this land, like I think the scrims, when mm -hmm. teams start noticing it, even if they weren't watching, because I know a lot of a lot of European teams can't watch the regionals anymore because of quals. Sure. You don't think that Vatira and Farah aren't going to be like we got a three percent better chance of winning against BDS if we Why use not? grass boost? We're using grass boost. Yeah. There's two reasons I think it might not happen. Uh, just to play devil's advocate, one placebo. You know, placebo runs Rocket League. You know. Can't wear yeah. team decals because of placebo. You can't do this because of placebo. You gotta wear two socks on. 
And number two, some of these players <laughs> paid like thousands of dollars for their alpha boost. And they're yeah. like, if I paid for it, I'm using it. So, yeah. but I mean, I think, a te- like I said, a team like Carmen Corp, like a t- that, that takes the game so seriously and takes winning so seriously. I, I really see it catching on. And then once the best players start doing it, everyone starts doing it. So yeah. Yeah. We I might see, see a lot of grass uh, and a lot of lawnmowers in Copenhagen. Uh, hey, I'm going to let y'all in on something, too, because that's not the only one. you got Black Ion. There's a boost called Sacred. Oh, yeah. Black Sacred is is essentially nothing. There's nothing there. And then there's another one. I, I sent a tweet out today about it. Some Somebody, it was like, um... I can't, I can't wait to the trade it, for them. It, you did have to trade for it. That's right, you did. Or I can't maybe... Wait to trade, I can't wait to trade for my favorite Hey, uh, you know what? As, if as if Psyonix is smart, they're going to see which one of these catches on, and they'll put it in the shop. Everybody will buy it. Yeah, but All right. you said the name Kefford, and that makes me so nostalgic. That's like one of those early YouTube tutorial oh, channels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he Kefford's was, a legend. Still working. He's always been on the grind to figure out how to improve at the game. It's, it's 100%. Incredible. Yes, he absolutely has. Let's keep rocking and rolling, though. We yep. got TSM making top four. Um, the question that I want to pose to you guys, TSM... Can they top contend eight, for? Mean, oh, top four. Can, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can they contend for a uh, split two major? Um, I, I would like to see so. I really enjoy watching TSM play. Um, I think I I can't remember where I said it, but I said somewhere it's like they just look like they're having the time of their lives. Like yeah. you know, like the way they play is very team based, and like you know, they're down two zero, and it cuts to Wavy, and he's laughing, and he cuts to Kareem, yeah. and they're chuckling. Um, and so they're really, really, really easy to root for, and they have a great org behind them, uh, or a, a great brand, I guess. I don't know how well the org is doing now. Um, sure. But, I mean, to me, I really like the team. I, I do worry that they do rely so much on team plays. Um, but I think if you look at the landscape, um, there's going to be changes, right? Uh, I think, you know, we had maybe nine or ten teams that were – you know, top eight contenders throughout the year, throughout the split, I should say. And I feel like three or four of those teams won't be, or eh, two or three maybe, uh, as some of those teams will sort of consolidate a little bit with the teams mm-hmm. that are just outside of making land, the best players will come together. Yep. Um, and so I think that, I don't think they're going to change. Uh, I think they were getting better uh, at the end mm-hmm. of the year, and they've already proven that they can beat some of these teams that are just outside like the top tops here. But uh, I'm going to say no, just because I think that the practice that LG and OG are going to get, and then maybe if like SSG or Rebellion or whatever, they make a move, yep. that'll probably just keep them in the same tier. But I think they'll improve. I just think sure. NA will be harder next next, next play. Yeah, that's fair. Well, um, you kind of alluded to it there. This new format only has two splits. And so obviously, not making major... You know, it's going to be rough to make worlds. Like, it's going to be very, very difficult to do so. So a lot it's of a these teams, um, uh, you know, as an outsider looking in, I don't know what's next. I think some of them are, are either going to completely explode, completely disband. I think some of them will, you know, obviously be making roster changes. Like players, like you mentioned, a, a high-level player on a team that didn't perform all that well. They might get plucked and, and pulled up to a, a, a team that's in a better position points-wise. Um, and we've got some here. SSG, Dig, M80, Rebellion, and NRG all miss the land. What is next for these guys? Do you think that these teams are going to stick? I mean, wh- where do we even go here? You, I mean, M80 specifically to me is a big question mark because, you know, they're... They're uh, national. Well, I yeah, mean, they're, they're, if I knew for certain, I would be re- writing a report on it right now. <laughs> um, but I've already already heard some rumblings. Have you? So yeah, there is... Yeah. Stuff's no, happening. Yeah, I mean... It of course, be, as soon as it's over, they it got, would they be got moves an incre- incredible rarity if all these team would, teams would stick. So sure. yeah, that's obviously not going to happen. There's going mm-hmm. to be some roster changes, um, and that will most likely result in some of those teams just completely being plucked yeah. apart. Yeah, I, I would especially look at teams like Sno- the Snowmen and Pirates on a Boat that don't have that org uh, backing, so that they and that means there's no buyout fees, right? Um, and they're not currently being contracted, so they're able to be picked up, maybe even paid more because other orgs right. won't have to look at it. But I mean, specifically the team that I'm looking at is Space Station. Um, I, I've never, I haven't said it on this podcast, but Jens knows. For, since basically they entered the scene, I was a massive Space Station fan. I used to only watch their team streams. I used to like show up, and if they lost, it would be 
it would be I I couldn't I would have a I remember when they missed the winter major last year. I wasn't I was pissed the whole weekend. Like that <laughs> like that's how bad it was. A real fan. A real yeah, fan. like I was fan. legit. And to me, and I I, I kind of like avoided it because I didn't want to you know I feel like they weren't as much of a story as the other ones. But after the showing they had last season, um, with LJ with Hawks are coming in, such an incredible story in the second half of the year. Um, I was very, I was quite disappointed in the roster move they made. Um, I thought if they couldn't find a true like secondary playmaker with LJ, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have gotten rid of Arsenal because Arsenal is such a good enabler. Um, and I think that they suffered from making a quote unquote side grade. I don't think it was a side grade. People said it was, um, with Chicago, who's still a very good player, but doesn't fit that team at all because him and Hawks are have such an overlapping play style. Um, so I think. Space Station's in a really bad spot. And I'll say, and the reason I'm saying that is because when you have an extremely talented player and you're not getting results, the clock immediately starts ticking on them leaving. And as an organization, that's what you don't want to happen, right? Like you don't want your your centerpiece to leave. And they were very, very lucky that they were able to pick up LJ early last time when Daniel left, right? And they were able to replace Sipical with Daniel and so on and so on. So to me, that's the team that, I don't, I don't know what the move is, but there has to be a move to upgrade the talent because you saw it every time they played Gen G. It's not that Gen G were outstratting them. It was that they yeah. were just they yeah. just didn't have the, they didn't have first killer. They didn't have chronic. They didn't have Jack. And yeah. if they want to be able to keep LJ as their long term centerpiece, you know, because what ha- like there's going to be players that start get better. There's going to be player uh, teams that form that need a new third that you know he could be part of that. Um, and so I think for them, this is a make or break and they've nailed it. Every time has been a make or break. Whenever, whenever a superstar leaves, they've always nailed it. And I really hope that they're able to do it again. But to me, that's the team I'm watching because yeah, yeah. And you don't want to lose. You it. might not even think about too much, but that's definitely happening behind the scenes is that the other players are seeing that too. They are seeing that a, an organization who really wants to compete in North America, uh, are struggling a, a bit and the players who are ready to get signed, are eager to join an organization like SSG, they're looking at them and they're looking, ah, maybe there's a way in there. So there's definitely uh, something brewing in, in that region as well. Uh, it has to be. Well, I know people said that they want fewer roster changes, but I don't think they're going to get it. <laughs> Nature of the you game. Know, as, Nature of the as, game. As the competition turns up and things get like, you know, more difficult with, you know, fewer spots at, at majors, um, at least for NA and EU, and then fewer spots at wildcard as well, which I think is the big piece of the puzzle here. And then just one fewer major as well. You know, the players are going to be more desperate to find that that perfect team. So I, I think you guys are right. We'll uh, we'll probably have a, a spicy trade window here between split one and two. With that said, we have possibly the biggest roster change of the season. Squishy retiring. He is done playing Rocket League. He concluded that final split with Muffin Men alongside Gimmick and Aqua. And they had an actually a fantastic final event. Squishy, his final goal of RLCS was an absolute clanger. Clang. It was a yeah. beautiful shot from the ceiling. So beautiful. Um, I mean, what do we say? You know, a legend of the scene is, uh, is hanging out the sticks. Maybe the most important player in terms of the development of the pro game um in history he's up there with with guys like you know Kronovi um, really well it's, I think Kdop it was more of a cultural thing but with Squishy he was the first to really popularize like quote unquote freestyle max it feels like him and Justin oh yeah every pro wanted to be Squishy yeah. the reason that pros are so mechanical Rocket League people forget was not it was seen as if you had mechanics you, you were a freestyler like you know yeah, yeah, flip yeah. resets Absolutely. and double taps were freestyle or stuff I remember and him getting a lot of like, um, like flack for the yeah, way he was, played. That was a knock like, on people him. were telling it him was... take it serious and stuff I like mean, that. The whole team gimmick was constantly yeah, yeah gimmick being team. ridiculed for his yeah. error rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like think about and so think about how much a player has to be and I like I how good they have to be, how iconic they have to be, in order to completely change the way that pro rocket league is viewed. Right nowadays, it's like if you can't do everything with your car you can't be a professional player, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, he'll never be forgotten, uh, you know, because the people he influenced are the best players in the world now, and the people that right. they influence will be the best player in the world in another generation. It's 
it's a genuine, and I, I've been pretty tough on Squishy as a, in his late career. I'm not going to pretend I haven't, but I've never pretended that he isn't, you know, along with K-Dop, uh, with his influence, the French scene, probably the most important player in the history of professional Rocket League. And so, you know, he'll be missed. There's a squishy size hole. It feels like LeBron's retiring, right? It's like <laughs> he's not he's not playing anymore. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah know, so what he's throw done a, a can't be measured. Let me throw you a difficult question here. Is Squishy the N.A. GOAT? Is he the N.A. GOAT? Hold on now. Let's not. Let's be... oh, and, I, and, and that question is for me. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, my NA goat is Garrett G. Yeah, I don't know if he's, if it's the NA goat, but sure. my NA goat is Garrett G. I mean, the whole story from no matter what happens, I won't quit until I, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I lift a trophy mm -hmm. to winning in Madrid. I mean, special place in my heart. I was sure. front seats there. So, um, but I mean, he's up there, obviously. Sure. He's, he's sure, a legend. Sure, sure. Um, I've not always been his greatest fan. I'll admit it. Um, he's you, were you one of the people calling him uh, call, telling him to take it serious when he wasn't doing boring <laughs> back in 20, 2016, no, 2017? I mean, more in terms of um, his uh, Twitter shenanigans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Rocket League players start young, and you'll notice. Yeah. And Squishy was no exception. Uh, there, he is very based now, um, but there was a time in which he could potentially be called cringe. Um, Dude, but I, that time I is didn't long realize gone. he's been playing for almost a decade. It you know, is when he, 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 he grew up in front of us, man. It's, it's crazy. so crazy to think yeah. that he's been at that level for so long. I see Michael, too, over there when I ask the GOAT question. Uh, let me throw it to you. What, what, what's, your, what's your take on that? I think in terms of influence, I think he's number one. But at overall, sure. body of work, influence, skill, winnings, I, I, I got him at four. So I think uh, I think the best North American Rocket League player of all time is, of course, Jacob Natman. Um, <laughs> I knew it was and, coming. Uh, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I mean, listen, not eight Dude, if years. If he keeps of, going, I think it's um, it's probably going to be like the unanimous opinion. I mean, I was going to say, yeah, and Garrett G's story ended, and, and that was only season two of JNAPS because he just kept going. He's played longer in the open era now than he did in the league player. Yeah, so that, yeah. that, should, that should let you know. I got Justin at two. I think Justin hit a peak, skill peak, uh, that in, term, in relative to the time that mm -hmm. I think has only been, I think Monkey Moon and Zen are the only other players in Cronovia, I guess, but even Cuxer was right there. So I would just say Monkey Moon and Zen are the only other yeah. players I've seen that were that much further ahead. Um, and then, and then I would put Garrett at three, just because I think he personifies and was the. Yeah. He was he was kind of like the K Dop of NA. Like you saw so many mm -hmm. players that pattern themselves after Garrett G that came up during NA's best, the Rettles, the Arsenal, the the sort of like team play but very offensive minded style that Garrett's always played. So I think he's really important. And then I put Squishy at four just because he did have you know the last maybe third of his career was kind of rough, um, and, and unfortunately that counts. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's still, like I said, probably the most influential player in the history of the game. And it's like him, Kate Alpin, Cronovia. Yeah, and, and with yeah, the squishy that. save named after him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Ceiling the, shot. Uh, so many iconic moments. Yeah, Absolutely. the ceiling shot that he didn't invent. Sorry, findable carpet. Um, <laughs> but he did popularize to such an extent that that shot is still, like, I can dream it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You, uh, dude, that. Frankly, that's still a good shot today. You it know, is. under one defender, over the next, yeah. that's still a nice shot. Who was it? That's the, Norris and it was Metz and Magnus. Magnus. Right. Metz yeah. and Magnus. Yeah. Yeah. That, other than the other duo. than <laughs> other than a lot highlights, which never age. Um, yeah. That is like the only highlight from like that era. That's still, still actually Devo. Up. Devo. That Devo double. Devos. Yes. Cool. Um, yeah. But yeah. there's maybe a few so, others. But like that's right. It aged much better than most. Yeah, most of them, it's like the most him. boring double tap you've ever seen. And they're like, uh -huh. how has he done it? And I'm like, yeah. that's like a rank <laughs> a GC one shot. Yeah. yeah. Or the Remco goal where he decided yeah. you could boost downwards to hit the ball <laughs> again. Like, whoa, crazy. <laughs> so funny. They Squishy, like you said, a, a legend that will never be forgotten. His impact is, uh, you know, he's still, still relevant he's today. He's, well, he's of course, signed of course, to of course. rule one as he, a streamer. <laughs> You might. I'm thinking. I'm, I mean, I was gonna. This is more off-season chatter, but like, who's getting kicked off Turbo's cheeks, bro? That's a content hey. team. So. <laughs> Squishy might end up. Squishy might end up being the rule one sub. 
Yeah, that'd be cool. Get him out. Right, I mean, action. that'd be good to get him at lands. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. We got yeah. Sam. So this weekend, obviously, everyone locked in their spots. Uh, Europe has Carmen Corp locked in. They got three more spots to uh, to solve. But Sam locked in Furia and Complexity with Furia taking their second victory over Complexity in the region. Um, do they deserve to be in that discussion for top tier land contenders, Michael? Um, um, so I did. I I, I went in a, you know shift courts last rate my, rate my take, and I did a little tier list after assuming the vitality um clinch which i i mean i probably should but whatever and i guess like yes and no is my answer because yes was like i have an s i think furia are like real threats to go really far and i think they're as good as any team in the field on their day but i did do a tier list and my s tier was just carbon carbon bds but then the a tier i i had g2 vitality falcons and furia and i think those are all those are four teams that if they are playing their best can beat both Carmen Corp and BDS yeah. in bracket on the day. Um, okay. So, Fair I enough. mean, I love the way that Furia play. They play so fast. They play so aggressive. Um, I'm really excited to watch them play against uh, uh, the European teams who are so used to kind of asserting themselves as, like, the most pressure-based, the most the fastest teams. Um, and I think Furia has always proved to be kind of a... Those Sam teams have always proven to be kind of a thorn in Europe's side. So I think that's really good. I think they're going to struggle against North America, uh, as Sam teams kind of typically do, um, just because North America loves to net sit, and Sam loves to pack the the, the house, and so like a lot of counters counters come through through that. Um, but I think the talent they have between Jorfinho, Lost, and Yan is as talented as any team in the world, and I think that they have replaced the issues they had last year by adding Jorfinho. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were in the final. I'm gonna be honest. I think they could be okay. anybody on any day. They're a bit like Gen G in, in the way that they are built like a super team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whether they can perform as a super team is yet to be seen, but they've done it in the region and mm -hmm. how stacked South America looked at the start and how dominant they've been within right. the region, it shows something. Um so yeah, like Michael said, they can beat the best teams on the day uh will they i mean they're not the favorites to win it they're i don't even think favorites for um a, a semi-final well a semi-final run yes they could do that quickly yeah. i'm i'm not gonna I'm, I, I'm like i'm not all the way on this take but i've been thinking about it kind of sneaky into furia 3-0 in swiss because they're, they don't play like any other team. You can't really prep for them because like the games go weird. Just I'm gonna I'm marinating. I'm gonna do some analysis. I'm gonna watch some tape. And I'll get back well, to you. But see. sneaky Fury they're, three. Uh, they're, first they're gonna match they're gonna is smoke LG. LG. They're gonna smoke LG. LG. Right. All <laughs> that all that all that chase them around Bro, the field stuff doesn't matter when Yan's going crazy. You you forgot about the grass boost. Hold on. You know what? <laughs> I gotta say. Is that, when Yan's in the air with boost, it doesn't matter how much you're driving, trying to bump him in the back <laughs> or whatever. Like, I, I, you know, they're going to have to feed the bear a lot. If All right. Keep I mean, it, it might just come down to that LG match, even though uh, LG might not be the fiercest opponent for them. If they manage to beat LG 3-0, then they're mm -hmm. getting such a, a much more favorable matchup in, yeah. in the next round that they can go 3-0. But if they right. go 3-2 against... Three LG, then it becomes a completely it, different story. It does, it does. And LG's gritty. They're definitely going to game plan. They've got time to uh, sit and yeah, think about it, sure. and, and they got some of the brightest minds on, uh, in the game yeah. over there. So, well, okay, we got a hot take here from Michael about Furia three and O potentially. Maybe he's not fully I, in not on it yet, take. but we're gonna. It's we're just gonna a throw, We're gonna, we're gonna see. You spit it out there. We're gonna see how it goes. Well, let's flash back to a take that Michael had early on. Uh, something about crew potentially yeah, having the ability to, you know, sneak a spot at the major or maybe just perform well in the region. But unfortunately, this last event they went zero and three. Michael, what is They're going on with seventh. crew? Well, unfortunately, I bought the European narrative that Sam was better than North America, so I thought. <laughs> You know, AJG, who beat, who almost beat Vitality, supposed to be the best team in Europe, uh, could maybe, you know, get into play Swiss playoffs more than once. But, um, I mean, 
this team had a very they they just something happened. It was kind of like dig where it was like the beginning of the season. We're like, yeah, okay, yeah, talented team. They're doing good. They're not maybe as talented as the top teams. They're playing well. And then it was like, what just happened? Um, mm. Seems uncharacteristic. Uh, wouldn't yeah. expect. I'm gonna. You know, I'm. I don't know anything. I am just. I'm but a man. But I wouldn't expect them to split. I mean, to stay next split, considering how much of a, how much re, how much their reputation, like they probably care about. Like, those are very very good yeah. players. They're winners. They're regional winners. They're NA regional winners. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it was a tough split. Didn't work. But best to just cut your losses. And I'm sorry, Sergio, but this just wasn't it. <laughs> Man, yes. And to be fair, like we're poking fun here, but Sam is a strong region. And, and even the teams that are not necessarily land contenders, it's not like it's a pushover where, I mean, let's be no, honest, in the, past, in the past, it's been that way. You I think can't get the region eliminated in general by is, timeless. Yeah. You can't, Say it again? If you're crew, you can't get eliminated by timeless. I, I, I'm, I'm not, no I'm not disagreeing. I'm yeah. not disagreeing. But I, what I'm saying is it's not, it may not be as bad as it looks. We saw OG do the same thing. They bounce back. Sometimes you have an off day. Sometimes, um, you know, I mean, it could be, I don't know, it could be a number of things. Um, and obviously, that it, there's no excuse for it. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but, um, you know, I think maybe, it's they, easier, maybe they do have it in them. Maybe they can bounce back. I think it's easier to regain mentally after if you do that in the first qual, because now it's like right. you've got to sit for th two months yeah, and just that's think fair. about how bad yeah. you and your team played that one day. And it's like, it's hard not to get let that get in your head, but. I like I like yeah. them to stay together. I think they're talent wise very very good. It just seems like there's something missing there, and well, it got worse. I think is the issue. Yeah. That's like, the thing. If a yeah. team gets starts sure. to get like, TSM, they go 14 to 12 to four. Right, right, like, right. We yeah, that make makes the sense. major, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so they only yeah, had I, worse results in the split. Yeah. So we had some and, and hope like at the start, and they're just disappointed. Right, like and like we mentioned with uh, NA too. I, I don't want to say that it's necessarily incentivized, but. Uh, the players and teams are going to be, they're going to feel more desperate this year. You know, it's shorter season, only two majors, fewer spots. So, you know, they got to make it happen as quickly as possible. So, Sam, regional recap. There you go. Fury and Complexity continue to dominate the region. That is your first and second seed for South America. Let's bounce to Mina, almost. which is almost the exact same. You have Falcons and Rule 1 as their 1 and 2. Falcons achieve the Triple Crown. Can they replicate that success at the major? Where do you guys have Falcons placing? in Copenhagen. If they don't make bracket, it's a failure 100%. But I think yeah, any team that makes that's bracket, where I'm at. just based on like how many good teams there are, like if they end up yeah. playing Carmen Corp because they went 3-1 sure. at one and Carmen Corp went 3-1 for some reason and they're 4-5, it's like, okay. But yeah, I mean, right. if they don't make bracket, yeah. um, I mean, listen, like I, I said in the last one, the Twins have yet to beat the North American allegations. I know it's only been two <laughs> lands, but... I will say the third time they went to the land, it was a land built toward their strengths in ones and twos, and they still lost to North America. So they're lucky that LJ is not there, but JNAPS is there, and JNAPS did take him to school last time. Um, I will say I think that this is the best Mina team of all time. I think it's better than the Falcons team that yeah. made the major final. They are unbelievable. Um, but so to me, they're so good. Like, all jokes aside about North America, this team is fun. They're a great watch, and they're a great team. So I really, I really, really am excited to see them play because I, I think any land where a Mina team goes far is a great land because the, they're the one region where it feels like all of the community kind of gets behind them. Um, yeah. Even Sam, for, there's like kind of a weird thing with Sam where people are just like, oh, Sam, cool. But like we love our Mina teams. And so, yeah, I, I would say top eight for sure or it's a disappointment. And then after that, the bracket goes where the bracket goes. Yeah, yeah I, a lot of people put them in fifth in the power rankings. I have them in sixth, but that's kind of where we expect them to end up. Uh, if they all played each other and you just get the power rankings result, obviously that's not going to happen. So brackets can, you know, throw some uh, go th throw some trouble their way, but they should be in those quarterfinals. That's just yeah. where they should be. Yeah, yeah, I like that take. I think anything outside of Swiss is is okay if they fall out. And and also even if they just catch a tough round five matchup and, and don't play well, I don't think it's a complete failure. But I'm I'm sure that you're you're on the uh, you know the nail on the head there. I think they probably want to make top eight. Probably I mean probably top four are better. I think they can too. It just depends on how they play. Yeah. Rule one on the other hand shows some signs of weakness throughout the split. You know losing here to Team Roc 
in the qualifier. That was uh, um, Dawn, by the way. The old Dr. Nush, Dr. Known and Nush. That team, they just got yeah. picked up, for those who don't know. Yep. The young, the young um, boys. Going to Game 7 with Twisted Minds, getting 4-0 swept by Falcons. And just really, you know, I, I, I think that they have, what they have shown, to me, indicates that they are not at the Falcons level yet. They yeah. are a rung or two below, and I think that that will, uh, you know, my opinion is that will probably be confirmed here at this major. Yeah, I got something to say about Rule 1, though. I think this is a free major for them, and this is why, okay? Ahmed and Khaled, they have nothing left to prove. They've made their mark on the history of the game. Yeah. However, Mod. the more I watch Nupo, the more I'm convinced he's, like, maybe already top eight players in the world. Like, this guy moves like I've never seen anybody outside of Zen move before. He is unbelievable. And I've, I've always thought he was really good. I put him at the top of my up next power rankings over um, Drolly before the season started, even though I, I thought Drolly was, was really good. Um, but to me, this isn't wins and losses don't matter. This major for Rule 1 is going to be about showing the world that Nupo is as good as anybody else on any other team in the world. I think he's going to have a legendary performance. Uh, I watched back their, their sort of 4-3, Regional 2 against, against Falcons, and, and, and for as good as, you know how good Rawas is on defense, you know, that team, they, they had no answers for him. He beats one every time. His car control is like Zen-esque. The only other player I'd say is Zen-esque. Mechanically, he's so good. And um, now Daniel joins the ranks. Because yes, what was yes. that goal? The golden, the golden three of, of Johnny Boy ones <laughs> from two years ago. Um, but yeah, that was, by the way, he's ridiculous. He's, he's not real. Yeah. But yeah, Nupo, you know how when you watch Zen and it almost feels like there's a fluidity to his mechanics that other oh, yeah. players don't have? Nupo yep. has that, 100%. Yeah. And uh, so I'm just, I don't care what they do. They can go 0-3. As long as I get to watch Nupo play Rocket League for three <laughs> series at least, I will go home happy with Real One's performance. All right. So as long as they show up and Nupo shows out, Michael's taking a dub. We know that for sure. But there is, um, I mean, that that's the, the, the recap there for Mina. Uh, again, I think it's it's actually very similar to Sam, at least hmm. regarding those top two. Um, I don't think Complexity is going to be as competitive as Furia internationally. Obviously, Complexity has, they've shown prowess in the past, and I think they're very consistent. Um, I may even say something like they have a higher floor, but um, yeah. I, I think that that Furia team and that Falcons team, they've got the ceiling that, I mean, I believe they could take the whole event if they if they play well enough. So there is, uh, there's your recap there for those two regions. Let's bounce over to OCE. We had power again, a triple crown, a total domination over the region. And the secondary team for OCE's Pioneers, they'll be representing your OCE squ uh, region. We've come to expect it. I mean, it seems like those are the two teams. Whichever roster you throw there, they end up being your top two. Um but let me, let me ask you guys a question. So is this the strongest OCE team of the open era, this power squad? And do you think they can go top eight? Jens? No, I really don't think so. I mean... Wait, to what? <laughs> to, to, to the makes it, makes it top eight and okay, they're, they're, okay. they're the strongest team. Actually, both, yeah. Um, well, they're, they look really strong within the region. And mm -hmm. their consistency is something I can only applaud, um, right? The power roster. And and actually, the same kind of goes for Pioneers, even though they had a harder time getting the points uh, in there. Uh, they looked like the strongest team to get that second uh, spot, and they sh showed that they were. So consistency-wise, nothing to complain about. Yeah. But just the level of gameplay, the level that they show, obviously it's really hard to compare. Um, sure. Especially when they're so, you know, out there in on the globe that they can't really compete against right. other teams, even in show matches if they wanted to. So it's hard for them. It's really tough. And it's hard to say where they stack up against the rest of the teams. But I don't believe they do <laughs> stack up very well against the rest. So I do not see them making a top eight. Yeah, I mean, I think I think in another format, maybe. Um, but the Swiss is just tough because you're going up against a, a juggernaut. Basically, like, 80% of your matches. Um, I do think this is they're really good. They look better than any team that play, came from OC last year just based on watching them in domestically. 
Um, but I, and I will say, I still think the best OCA team of the open air was probably the spring pioneers, uh, from two years ago when it was scrub Lockheed, and banana head, uh, the one that beat the team that beat BDS. Um, I think that just alone, I know, I know something was probably going on with BDS, but if you beat BDS, you're probably still the best team yeah. to come out of your region. Cause not many teams have done that on yeah. land. Um, you know, maybe if they can take a couple games off Gen G in their first matchup. They can make it a little bit easier for themselves and they can get another yeah. win somewhere in there. Uh, and maybe another one. But I don't really see them going much further. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to agree. I think, like you said, just applause to the consistency. But it's just so tough. It's so tough when they are kind of out there on an island and they can't regularly get practice on one of the main servers. And scrim teams from a couple of the larger regions it, it, it's just tough to continue to elevate your level um at least they, elevate, at least they segue. took they <laughs> got their concerns heard right mm -hmm. for yep. traveling to copenhagen because that was almost an issue um, yeah, it was. Yep. and uh, they were heard and it seems like that's gonna be fixed so um maybe hopefully maybe hopefully uh, we'll see them be ready for gameplay at the Swiss stage in Copenhagen. Yeah. Well, let's bounce over to APAC. Uh, we got Elevate taking down Gladiators in the Grand Finals. They did it. Um, this is the first APAC team to make a LAN without any imports since the 21-22 season, uh, the Spring Major. And... I mean that's a huge that's a huge feat, especially when you've got a player that is a complete rookie in his very first split making the land. Yeah, I mean, of course, our boy Kevin, friend of the yeah. show, friend Absolutely. of the show, um, the complete rookie Sphinx. We'll get to him later, but uh, and then the very renowned LCT. Let's not forget. I mean, he's yeah. been around. He's really shown up, and he shows that you can just pick up Kevin and, and Sphinx and do it again and even go to land with them. I mean, it's such a good story. It's They're such a fun team. Not just to watch their fun team, but as personalities, as teammates. I mean, they, they sh shared their comms from yeah. the winning moment and they go hard. They go crazy. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Kevin also showed um, that he was once again looking at Instagram models to uh, get his motivation <laughs> Most, up for the he's win. He's just all of us, you know? He's just all of us. Yeah. <laughs> he shared it a um, while ago, I think last season or the season interview, before, yeah. in, in an interview. interview, and that's just what he does. So I think they should replace Coach Trill. His coaching mm -hmm. spot should go to an Instagram model, take, an, take them just, to Copenhagen. Just stand there. Just stand Just, yeah. there behind the players, give uh, Kevin a back rub, and they're winning the major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, listen. Grass meta. Get that <laughs> out of here. We, it's Instagram model meta. <laughs> the baddie meta. It's amazing. I mean, um, they might have some issues at the moment with their visa. Mm -hmm. So there's always that. It's always a little tough. I mean, even if yep. you're not going to the United States, it's still tough for, for some people. Um, I talked to Kevin and he said that it's going to be close, um, but they're hoping and they're expecting to be ready just in time to be yeah. able to fly out to the first major. So really happy for them. Yeah. Hopefully so they get it all solved. Uh, I mean, I, I, we've had it happen once in the past and it, I don't know that it was necessarily visa issues, but no. when a team can't make it to the international event, it's, it's just such a bummer, you know, not, yeah. not only format wise, but also for... Uh, for, obviously for the, the players themselves, you know, that earned that spot. We'd like to see them go, but also for all the fans at home, you know, the people that are cheering on their region. So hopefully Elevate and uh, Psyonix and Epic, hopefully they get all that resolved and it'll be good to go by time uh, for the Copenhagen Major. Let's jump to possibly the most dramatic uh, regional or open qualifier here this last weekend, SSA. So... We have been keeping tabs on a team named Young Money Clan that is comprised of three European players, 
They are playing in the SSA uh, region for RLCS this season. And they're not the only ones, but they are probably the best competition for Limitless, which is why we've kept tabs on them. And obviously, Limitless had positioned themselves quite well to make this major by winning the first two events. Um, Young Money Clan getting second place. And we've had a very similar scenario in the past. One that happened in Mina back when they only had one spot. Um, there was a race between Falcons and Rule 1. And essentially, one team, if they want a chance to beat Limitless or back in, in Mina, it would have been Falcons. If they want a chance to beat them early enough to gain enough points to overtake them uh, and then you know qualify for the major for that region, they would have to match up against that team in the quarterfinals. Or All right? get lucky because is... another team would beat them in quarterfinals, but less likely. Yeah, exactly, right. Um, and so that's, in a weird way, actually possible to make happen through your Swiss results. Um, but obviously that would be comprising the competitive integrity of the event. Because obviously. what what you would need to do is not play your best or end up losing games to, to, to face that team. Because if Limitless goes 3-0 and and Young Money Clan goes 3-0, then they're going to be placed on opposite sides of the bracket. They won't meet until the grand finals. And if they do that, then Young Money Clan won't have a chance to, to, to make up that point differential. So what uh, the result was is Young Money Clan ended up losing round three and four, going to round five in the Swiss, which they have not done this season. And, and to provide further context, Young Money Clan has been playing from home in Europe on 140 plus ping. And they went to the SSA region to Réunion. and were boot camping. Where was it? Réunion, the French islands off the coast of Africa. So they're there and they have much better ping now. And you would anticipate better ping would probably at the very least equal similar results. I would, I would venture to guess better even. And they had worse results, far worse results. And so, you know, people knew what situation was shaping up. Rise was talking about it on <laughs> some of the biggest podcasts uh, in the scene with Chalk Cast and, and First Touch. Mm -hmm. um, and as it was occurring, Johnny Boy was streaming live, and, and they pulled up some of the replays and watched some of the stuff. And, and you see some just very embarrassing odd decisions. You know, it's not something that looks like it's a bad day mechanically or maybe some miscommunications. It just looks, uh, frankly, just trolly. And so uh, there was an investigation epic uh, posted on the subreddit that they looked into it, and they have decided that Young Money Clan was intentionally throwing or match, fi match fixing to achieve that result of getting limitless in quarterfinals. And they took action against that team, banning those players for one year. Uh, they had to forfeit their earnings for that event as well, and they were, of course, DQ'd out of that third qualifier, which at that moment clinched. Uh, the spot for Limitless. So Limitless is there. They will be your SSA representative. But obviously, it was a, a very, again, dramatic fashion, the way that un things unfolded. And I'm, I'm curious to hear, hear you guys take, um, do you guys think that it was you know, obvious enough that there's no debate about it? Do you think that the one-year ban is, is sufficient? Uh, you know, let me know what your thoughts around that situation are. Michael, you go ahead and kick us off here. So um, it wasn't actually the playing that, I think for me made made it made it pretty obvious to me. Um, you know, one of them was one of the players was playing on a laptop. The other one allegedly had a messed up monitor. Whatever. What what really got it for me was that, you know, on Johnny Boy's stream, Rise disclosed that a certain coach uh who chose to remain anonymous, that I totally don't know who it is, uh, was approached by them weeks before asking just to coach them on Saturday and maybe Sunday. So they didn't they didn't want to coach for Friday. Uh, to me, that 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 proves right. pretty obviously their uh, intention. Um, I want to say um, I, I wasn't a fan of the sort of dogpiling that happened after it. Uh, these are young kids, and uh, while they absolutely should be, be should be being held accountable, they should be mm -hmm. being held accountable because it's a really really good learning experience for them. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're young. Um, what? And, and, and I don't want, I mean, obviously there's a lot of young kids and if they want to go out of their young kids, but the adults, please don't uh, be so mean because they're not going to learn. If, 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 if they're just constantly defending themselves, they're never going to learn what they did was wrong. They're not going to accept that what they did was wrong and they won't be able to grow from it. 
the one thing that really, really bothered me about the whole situation um, was the sort of sentiment that came afterward that uh, it was justified because of the format. That some people were saying, well, they just wanted to go to the major. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to say, I am, and Hootie, I guess you can, you can also see from this. I don't know, Jens, if you've coached as well, but I, I, I coached basketball for a long time. Uh, if a player ever came to me and proposed that idea, they would never play ever again. I would ask them, yeah. like, they, they would sit at least a few games and we'd have to have a talk with their parents about if they're good enough or they have the competitive drive enough to play organized sports. Um, and the idea that, you know, first of all, these, 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 this team specifically has already, you know, they, you're, I'm hearing, sorry, I'm hearing that they just want to go to the major so bad and they just want to win so bad. That's why they're doing it. They were, they admitted they weren't good enough to play in their own region. I don't want to hear any, they just want it so bad. If they wanted it bad enough, they would have grinded to be good enough to compete in the EU. And maybe they will now, now they have all their free time. Um, so, you know, the idea that this is some sort of sentiment that people agree with in Rocket League is a little alarming because this is the format. Like, this will always be the format uh, for the rest of the year. And also, and, uh, you can have formats that are maybe less chaotic, but still have a possibility yes. where losing a game can be advantage. Exactly. Can be an advantage. So, um, I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a competitive integrity, competitive integrity thing for me. It obviously is, but not in my opinion as much as. Imagine trying to tell Zen or Vatira or the guy who was very, very, very vocal about this, Rise, that they have to lose a game. If Vatira loses a game, he puts it on himself that he wasn't good enough and he grinds. If Zen, Zen lost one one RLCS match in seven months and got the 2700 MMR afterwards. Like, to me, the best players in the world, the best players in the world, this isn't an option for them. So you can't tell me they just wanted it more, these kids. They just wanted it more. Because the ones who are at the top, they, they, they would never even think to do it because they're not, they have a, so much respect and love for the game and the people that they play. And I'm, like, I know I said I'm not going to dogpile, but I'm not dogpiling. I'm not saying this is Young Money Clan. They made their mistake. They're going to learn from it, and I'm sure they'll be better out because of it. But I, I really don't want to hear other players talking about, well, you, 90% of people would have done the same. Yeah, that's why 90% of people can't play in the RLCS because they don't <laughs> want it enough. So, yeah. yeah, that's just a ridiculous I sentiment. I can't believe that was a thing. It's just a very unfortunate situation that you'd never want to see happen. It's just kind of sad that it did happen. Um, also, the fact that they rec- received a one-year ban, that's a hefty ban in RLCS. Especially because it's in the middle of the season. That is a means hefty for- ban. Uh, props to everyone involved, by the way. They did this overnight, basically. I know... Uh, a manager, an RLCS admin, who basically pulled an all-nighter to make this happen. So props to them looking into everything they could uh, to make the decision as quickly as they could. Um, and if they believe... Oh, I've, we've, we've all seen the clips, so you, you can form your own judgment on that. Uh, if you, you want to see them, they're linked on shiftrle.gg. There's an article by Finnard who wrote it all up to give the context with all the the clips with it as well. It, it, it doesn't really matter what I think of yeah, that. Yeah. It, it, it matters what the investigation found. And if they found it worthy of a one-year ban, then that tells, I think, everyone what was going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, it's sad because you'd want to be more positive about the influx of uh, other players into the uh, South African region, right? Uh, the Sub-Saharan African region. You had all these European players join and it's a bit awkward. Let's be honest. It's a bit awkward for everyone involved. Um, but you want to make the best out of it. You want to see those European teams improve the region, be respectful to each other and to South African players and to to help each other grow as a region because... Once you play there, you have to stay, keep playing there, or you're for, for the, you're not even allowed to join another region with the current rules. So you'd better enjoy it there and better make make the best make the best out of it, and yeah. actually, you know, kind of help the region grow as a whole. And and then something like this happens, and it's just it's just so unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, but if action needed to be taken, it it needed to be taken. So yeah. we are we're, it is what it is. 
That's right. It is what it is. I, I, I do want to jump in and just say that I think there, there, there's an important distinction to make that I think a lot of the community members or players are miscommunicating. Um, I think that they empathize with the players because they can understand the desire to make the major. And so they are saying that they either don't blame them or other people would do it. Um, or even that they might do them themselves. But I think what they are meaning, and this is me putting words in their mouth, so I, I, you know, I, I could be wrong, but I think what they mean is that they understand like why someone would be motivated to do that. Because in a weird way, in that situation, there was an incentive to lose, which typically doesn't happen in competitive sports. There's not really any reason to do so, but there was a reason to do so there. It doesn't make it right. It's not the thing that they should do. If they really wanted to win and they were desperate to make the major, then they could have boot camped the entire split. You know, they could have gone down to that spot early in the, uh, you know, early in the split rather than waiting till this final moment when they had all but locked themselves into, you know, second place at best. Um, and, and no matter what, obviously there is no justification. It's not okay. And, you know, the players being punished and, and accepting responsibility is, is what should happen. But I think some of the community, and maybe I'm giving them too much leniency here, but I think that they are misspeaking when they say, like, I would do it too, or someone else would do it. Um, I think what they mean to say is, like, I understand why that motivation is there, but, you know, that, do that doesn't make it okay. You know, if I'm, in a, if, I'm, if I'm in a tight spot with money, does it make it okay for me to go steal from my neighbors, right? Like, you might understand why I am desperate to, to, to make some more money, but that doesn't make it okay for me to, you know, harm others or, or do things that are, um, you know, objectively yeah. against the rules. Yeah, I or, guess or what wrong. you're saying, and and I hope you're right. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too, because we uh, unfortunately we did see quite a few players. To me, um, it's a lot. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. I was just gonna say I we said, did see quite a few players speaking up and and saying like, don't be too hard on them. Like I understand, or or like I said, some of them even saying like I would I would maybe do the same thing. To me, it's like doping in baseball back in the day, right? Everybody did it. it why wouldn't yeah, you do yeah. it if everyone else is hitting 50 home runs? You're still breaking the rules. It's still illegal. And, there's a, and the greatest baseball player who's ever lived isn't in the Hall of Fame because he fell victim to that, right? Barry Bonds yeah. had three MVP awards before he ever took steroids. And he's not in the, he's not in the Hall of Fame now because of that. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, Lance listen, Armstrong. Yeah, you know, like everybody does if it. everyone's doing it, then I can do it too. And obviously not everyone's yeah. doing it, but people will sure, say, well, yeah. you know, I, you, they only did it because it was, it was how, what they had to do to win well, because everyone else was they doing just it. Want, that's right. That's right. And, and, and so, yeah, that, that's, that's why I'm uh, hoping, like Ian said, hoping that some of these players are maybe just not communicating all that well, or maybe they just, maybe they fully don't grasp what they're saying, you know, mm -hmm. um, just because you really want to win or really want to achieve something doesn't make breaking the rules and cheating okay. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. is no justification for I, it. I, but, I don't think it's necessary to go as far as to say that they're justified in what they did, but also the other side is just as true. Like There is no need to go after the players who got punished right. because they already received, received their yeah. punishment. Right. They got That's their right. justice. There's no reason yeah. to, be, to be harassing them. Basically. So... Um, a tough situation all around. I think Ian said it best. It's just very awkward, and you, and you wish that it didn't happen because those players, I mean, if anything, they should be extra careful and cautious and, and kind with their behavior because they are playing in a region that's not their home base region. And, you you know, you would hope that those individuals would take that extra care. Um, yeah. the but funny unfortunately, thing, though, that, that's, that's the, funny thing, that's the way a, things shook out, and uh, the punishment a, was dealt out, and it is what it is. <laughs> But on a bright note, we do have Limitless with yeah. a triple crown. That's what I wanted to talk about. It's so or, funny or that or because of the uh, disqualification, that's how they clinched their spot. <laughs> that's the moment they clinched their spot is when yeah. Young Man and Gun. That's probably <laughs> the first that time that's ever happened, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's unique. That's awesome. So well, let's, let's pose this question in. Can that Limitless squad get a victory on land? Maybe against the maybe I mean a game and a, and a well, series. Well, would be good uh, for yeah, a series win, a series but win, a series, game, win, a series win. Maybe if Elevate show up like fourteen hours before sleep and then hit round one and they're just out of it. Um, but I just think the lack of practice that te that teams get 
in ranked, I think, more so than I know there's yep. European teams in the LCS, but it's like, I mean, they, they were getting challenged by, you know, the 37th best European team on 140 ping. And I, I'm, I don't want to disrespect them, but I also feel like it would be a little bit disrespectful to teams like that you would say maybe they have a chance against, like Pioneers or Elevate, because those teams play against very, very, very good competition. I mean, you saw it in APAC. Uh, Lunar uh, and his team, LA Signal, kind of, Walked in there, made top two, thought, oh, we get to do this. Didn't even make Swiss. I didn't make it past Swiss, right? After talking a lot uh, of the, the Can you crap, expand so. on that, though? Because there's more context there that just makes that a really sweet story. Came in. So, first of all, starts as Elevate sub. Leaves Elevate yep. just to get, join mm-hmm. his own team with two uh, APAC players who are of American descent. And kicks one of the APAC players to join another NA player. After finishing top two, kicks, an, uh, kicks one of his teammates. A and then rookie, immediately by goes the way. very promising yeah. player. Yeah. yeah, and then immediately goes ninth through eleventh while the team he was subbing for wins the event and goes to land. So and, and the player and he who, kicked who knocked yeah who knocked them out in round five. The player, the player he kicked. He kicked. <laughs> Just an all time like the curb player he your, kicked two weeks yeah. ago who scrambled to find a new team, turn around and beat him in Swiss and knock him out. I mean, there are layers of irony here. A very Poetic much justice. Right Larry there. David, that is Larry David weekend for Mr. Lunar, uh, who continues to have one of the sillier careers in. Silly, the Apex, Silly is a good word. Silly. The APAC script writers, give them a raise. Dude, best, stuff over the there. best storylines in our. But now that we're talking about APAC in terms of limitless, in terms of limitless doing something at land, that would be the region you would look at usually mm-hmm. to see maybe from the other m- most minor of the minor regions can they take a, a win against them but yeah. if you just look at that elevate squad they have really shown that they oh, have yeah. mechanics they have the team play they have things right. going for them so even though in terms of the overall competition in copenhagen they might not make it that far either um they look like very strong competition for a team like Limitless. Too strong competition, yeah. you would say. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is our regional recap. We covered the rest of the world besides Europe, which is coming up soon. But before we get there, we've got a segment here. Next up, Rookie of the Week. We've got some nominees. Wavy on TSM. Creams on TSM. Swift on Ninjas. Dr. Gnome with Team Rock. Nush with Team Rock. Um, and, and that may be ROC. I'm not sure. But Sphinx with Elevate. Um... Yans, you want to kick us off? Who is your sure. next up Rookie of the Week? For me, it's pretty clear. I, I want to give a shout out. That's my, my honorable mention to that team, RC or Rock. I'm also not entirely sure. But Dr. Noon and Noosh have been on the radar for the entire split. And this regional, they really went there. They really showed up in the MENA region. Mm-hmm. But the Rookie of the Week is Sphinx for playing his heart out and beating Gladiators in the finals and scoring some uh, great goals that, on the way and just some of those passing plays with, with Kevin and with LC, LCT. It was, it was a joy to watch. And he is the best player in the region already, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. He's the best player in APAC and he's so young. He's the future GOAT of the region. Ooh, Love that. Um, Stand on it. Goat, goat of APAC. So, oh, hey. I mean, he is the rookie of the week, but there's so much more than just this week for him. Yeah. 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 Um, I think for my rookie of the week, I'm going to take the boy, Dylan, wavy. Um, okay. To me, you know, the term wise beyond their years are like, it, it's like they're a veteran is a little overused, but for me, wavy is the, the definition of that. Uh, not only in the fact that his play style is a lot more team-oriented than a lot of the ones mm-hmm. prodigies that come up in NA, but he seems like a blast to be on a team with. He seems always so positive, and he, he, you know, ev- you know, he's pretty much liked by everyone who's ever kind of interacted with him. And Special. It fe- yeah, it, it, it Special feels like, NA. yeah, it, it feels like in a in a esport where the young players often come with massive egos. You know, they're kids, yeah. whatever. Um, and maybe don't get along that well with their teammates because they feel that they are better, they deserve whatever. To see a kid who's gotten so much more hype than his teammates, despite the team playing a very team-oriented style, not get a big head, not get inflated, still be great and calm, still provide a great energy. 
to me, that matters more than just him being a fantastic player. And it's what makes me really believe in him as a star in the region for a long time. It reminds me of Jack when Jack first came out and you were like, all right, he's great, but look at all the other stuff that comes with having a pair of the Jack on your team, right? Or uh, Reddles, yeah. for example, right? So to me, that that's why he's my, my rookie of the week. I thought he played fantastic. And I think we're going to be seeing more and more of the kid as his career progresses. Well, I'm going to stick with you on the TSM side. I, I, I got to shout creams. Um, I think that that is a player that has historically been a bit underrated. You know, he started kind of on that sub role with Alpine and then just kind of bounced around some different bubble teams and never really, um, you know, made his way up into that top tier professional play. And, um, I mean, the guy is proving to, 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 he's proving what I believe to be true is that he's been underrated. I mean, you look at some of these highlight plays from this weekend, the guy is, is clanging, you know, ceiling, Reset, redirects down into the net. I mean, he's got the the, the, the icy solo play to knock out M80. Um, just stepping up in big moments for TSM. And I think that's something that they need. They do have that team-oriented play style, like you mentioned. Um, they also are very willing to play defense and counterattack. I'm not going to say that that's all that they do, but they're certainly willing to absorb a lot of pressure. And I think that they will be a little bit more of a threat if Creams can continue to come out of that shell and uh, be a little bit more of an offensive threat and, and prowess across the field. So I got to shout Creams as my uh, next up rookie of the week. Let's move into a preview for upcoming EU regional. We got a lot on the line here. As I mentioned, Carmi Corp has locked in their spot, but there are three yet to be solidified. But before we get into that, we've got a question here. Farah has a triple crown from last spring and continued to win at the major and at the World Championship, and now on a new team, Carmi Corp, Regional 1, Regional 2. Can he continue his streak in Regional 3, or will Monkey Moon, BDS, Gentle Mates, Oxygen, someone knock them off the top? Yeah, so on the topic sheet, the reason I put Monkey Moon is because Shift put out a stat, shout out to Will, Social Goat, uh, that... Um, Monkey Moon's lost his last four grand finals he's played in, which happened to be the last four events he's played in. And they're all to Farah. All four of those losses are to Farah. Um, I believe they actually lost again. Yeah, they lost again. Uh, they lost once in the spring split to Vitality. So the last five times Monkey Moon's gotten to a final, the guy can beat everybody, but this dude that's not even playing, apparently. Um, <laughs> he owned Vatira in the split before and in the major in the worlds, and still just something, something's, something's up with Farah. He seems to know something. Um... But I think that's similar to what G2 was. I think Fair is smart enough to know that, hey, huge burnout after this split. So maybe we don't practice. We, we go 85%. You know, we're already locked for the major. Let's get that one seed and don't and play with no pressure because the last thing you want to do is overexert yourself after this long six week sprint. Um, and I think. On the other side, you got BDS, who is like, they look like they would chop their limbs off to get a chance to beat Carmen Vi- <laughs> Corp because they keep blowing it at the end. So I think similar to G2 Gen G, one's playing with a lot more reason, while the other one's simply trying to, you know, make history, uh, which is a lot tougher of a goal to reach than just beating the team in front of you. So I'm going to say, I think BDS has their best shot this weekend. Don't believe you. I think Farah is just on a roll right now. And I right was now, watching, it's been a year. Yeah, well, yeah, but he still is. <laughs> That's the point. I was watching some behind-the-scenes footage from Carmine Corb in French. That's the length I go for for this. Um, I don't understand it, but there were subtitles, so it was good enough. And um, just watching that team play, they look so comfortable, but not too comfortable. They are still firing on all cylinders when they actually have to perform and when they win, they are still super hyped about that win. And that's what you need to see. That's the comfortability of being at the top and knowing you can beat anyone else and still having that firepower and that that drive to actually want to win every series as well. Mm. So I think they still have it. Oh, it's, yeah. it's not about, oh, we're clinched now, we're, we're into the major... We can rest. They are not ready to rest. If there is any team in the world that I would feel would not fall victim to that, it's that team. Exactly. Vatira, 
you look at his tweets, that sucker, he don't want anything except first every sink, every he time. He hates losing. He hates He it. hates losing. And then you look at Rise, you've always got Farah. And, you know, we talked about G2 as well. I actually kind of feel the opposite where I think G2 felt more pressure. I know they already clinched, but if you look at their tweets, what did every single one of them tweet out? Miss the three P. They wanted it. These teams want to make history. They want to do something special. They want to be impressive. You know, winning is not enough. Winning two events is not enough. You got to do something crazy. And I think that that team wants to do so. Um, of course, there are incredible teams in Europe. And I think obviously there are, you know, four, five, maybe even six teams that if they're playing their best can compete with KC. But I'm not betting against them. Not yet. They've given me no reason to. They are clean. They are composed. They're playing great Rocket League. And I think they are going to probably win this event as well and get themselves a triple crown here. Will, uh, let's, let's keep rocking and rolling, though. We got, we got vitality. Lots of question marks around this team. Some people think that they're looking worse than they ever have. Some people think it's just a little hiccup. Some people think it's the post-world championship bug. There are so many different things. Some people say it's just the fair difference. Will Vitality bounce back and gain their old form before Copenhagen, or will they continue to struggle? I will go first. Say it, Hoodie. I think they continue to struggle. And I, 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 I think that is a hot take. I think that is one that, you know, a lot of people are, it's an uncommon take. I think a lot of people probably won't back that. And I understand why. They have so much prowess, so much talent, but there's a lot of pressure on that team, especially now. When the narrative has changed, I think when you have momentum and everything's going your way, it's easy to keep it rolling. But when things start rolling backwards, a la BDS last year, and it continue and it continues to roll backwards in, in that second event, it's really hard to stop that, shift it, and go back the other direction. And I'm not saying they can't. I think they absolutely can. They are three uh, uh, of the best players in Europe. There's no doubt about that. But there's a lot riding on this final event. Frankly. It's going to be difficult to make it to Worlds if they don't go to this major, and I know that they know that. They lost their coach. You, you, you know that that is not a huge deal, but it's something in the back of their mind. It's a detail, and it all comes down to this. And here's the thing with, with Europe. They could end up losing to top-tier teams. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not even that they're going to play so poorly they lose to a, a 14, you know, 13-14. They might just end up losing to... Magnifico and Gentlemates, and then they catch, you know, like a hot endpoint or something. I anything could happen here. So I, I actually, I'm going to make the hot take. I think, I think Vitality ended up missing the major. You know, that is that's a good take. That's a good take. And I agree. And I, 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 I've uh, processed and I have thought out a lot of the things you said. Um, yeah, book, book Vitality to win this regional. Um, this is all I gotta say. <laughs> all right, there are certain people, athletes, the LeBrons, the Mahomes, the Messies, and the Fakers. If you want to go into the esports world, and sure. you know the what separates regular greats from the goats is that when there is an attempt, there is a legacy weaving moment. They always take advantage of it. And I don't care how bad they look compared to last year. I am still not ready to pull the crown away from Zen. And I think we're about to see Vitality do what they've done every single time they've been told that they can't. Because what happened? First it was, can Zen do it in RLCS? Can he do it twice? <laughs> can he do it three times? Can he do it at the Major? Can he do it at Worlds? And then all of a sudden, we just believed he could. So that's clearly the problem. Because now what we're saying is, can oh, he make the Major? Oh, I see. Okay. And when so they, now when, the doubt when, is back. When you when 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 uh, okay. when the doubt comes in, Zen I'm responds. Following. I think that gotcha. he. I, I think that this is setting up perfectly for one of those moments where next Sunday we're gonna be like, "Oh God, we ha Zen's on land again." Like we thought. We were, oh my <laughs> God, I forgot this guy. It's similar to what happened with First Killer this week, where it was like, "Oh right, mm -hmm. him." Um, He's back, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just think this is a. This is a uh, another legacy moment for him, and he has capitalized yeah. on every single legacy moment. So, book me. Call, put it on tape. Vitality will win the qualifier. They'll beat BDS in the final. BDS finally beat KC in the semi, and then uh, okay. beat KC in the final. I think you're both wrong. I'm going to be the filthy centrist this time. <laughs> uh, I, I don't see Vitality 
being at the same level as uh, some of the other French teams, yeah. still, um, they their issues if our analysis if my analysis isn't completely garbage then their issues stem from their play style from their game plan and that's that's really tough to fix it's not having an off day it's not um falling in in the game fives and game sevens it's it's a systemic issue and that's really tough to correct um but they're still very good in terms mm-hmm. of what they can, their floor is still quite high. Um, they they just aren't at their ceiling at the moment. So I will say that they will clinch the major, but they will still not be their old vitality self. That's fair. And that's probably the most likely outcome. <laughs> I mean, so thank you for leaving it for me. Thank you for leaving it for me. Pick a side, All right, coward. well, we've got exciting news here <laughs> to close out this regional preview for Europe. The Dop, he's back. He's back. k is in his first main event of yes, RLCS 2024 sir. with Solary. Can he prove Go. that he's still got it? Does Dop make top eight? Oh, man. You know, yeah. this is like, it's like when you see the, <laughs> you see like an old dude running a marathon and yeah. like just the, the, the first place guy is just lapping him and you're like, don't do that. <laughs> Like, or you know what it's like? It's like Kada being at the at the uh, in a main event is like that scene in Indiana Jones where like the guy does the knife sword dance, and then realizing that he has to actually play in the main event against the main event teams, like when Indiana Jones just takes out his gun and shoots him instead of like going and yeah. doing the the battle. Um, I think we should just appreciate that one that the greatest player of all time is back, and I'll probably even get a main event series because he still pulls that much. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, not a main event series, a main Mainstream. broadcast series. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm just happy to see him there. Chaussette as well, land winner. Chaussette. Um, and excited for Reese Fox to, to let mm-hmm. some of the uh, more casual fans show, know what why they've chosen a team with him as, as a young prodigy. Next up, Prospect as well, making his debut. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. That's so, yeah, right. I, um, I, I don't think, I think top eight, you know, he's an old man. Let's not push him too much. But Yeah, Reese Fox. Indeed, the only debut this uh, this regional, so that's cool. Um, mm. But, however, he is playing with two grandpas. <laughs> you know what's They're more wa- bad? I'm pretty sure I'm older than him. The, the walking <laughs> sticks sure are out. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think so too, but I think I'm K-Dop's age, actually. I'm not sure. How old is this guy? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely older. I'm looking him up. Yeah, you look him up. But um, the walking sticks are out. And they're smashing some other teams with it over there. They won. They qualified <laughs> over Sir to actually make it into the top sixteen. Insane. Uh, so they're they're win. smashing with those walking sticks, but they're gonna break. You know, yeah. those walking sticks won't last forever. You guys want to see? Right. Sorry, sorry. Just really quickly, this is so off topic. Yep. You want? You guys want to know something crazy? Chassette and Hawks are the same age. <laughs> I, I yeah, that makes sense to me. Just broke my head because I just forgot that Hawkster was like around back then. I Dude, wanted to look at yeah, Hawkster's thing. He's been around. NA got some old heads running oh, around. Well, no, Shawset's yeah. only twenty-two. I thought yeah, Shawset was like twenty-four because he's no, been around Kato, for. for Kato is twenty-five, so a year yeah. younger than me. That hurts. Yeah, that hurts. That's, he's a little. <laughs> he's, I'm still. St- I'm still younger than Kato. Like it's gonna change. I'm still younger. Um, Very nice. L- you, let's not. You, let's not ask Cody about this. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move on. I, I got gray hairs. All right, let's skip that. All right. We have a new segment here. First time on ShiftCast. Title is Spoiler Alert. We are going to predict or throw out our best guess at which team that is uh, not in position to make the land, but could upset or ruin the run for someone that is in position. Um uh, Gintz, would you like to kick us off? Who is your team over there in the European region that you think could ruin a land run for one of those top five, six teams? I mean, it's a team that already has 13 points right now okay. in, in shared seventh place. So they're, mm-hmm. they're not too far down below. Sure. But they are the belly goal. <laughs> the belly goal. <laughs> 
I like that take, man. They've been consistently solid. Let's I mean, go. they're the big, they're maybe the biggest surprise in terms of mm-hmm. teams on the come up. This is the main event. This this split, right? With yeah. with Speed, who is just the comeback of the century yeah. for him, uh, taking on these these uh, regionals with Temper on the team. I mean, the Netherlands represent Hyder as well. I mean, it's just a fun team, and mm. they make it work. And, and that's yep. the most impressive. Like a Sir, great, but they're just getting eliminated by Solary in the, the double elimination bracket before Swiss. I mean, you can't you can't let that happen, and Belly Gold don't let that happen. So they're a team who can actually take down some teams. So if if anyone's gonna do it, why not them? Yeah. Um. I, from my pick, I'm gonna get me a glass of Stella. Head down to the pub with the lads. Because we're supporting Top Cougar FC this weekend, baby. <laughs> a real Brexit football, man. Come on. Um, I really like the way this team plays. I think they were power ranked like top eight by the other teams. Uh, they had a tough first regional, and they're back. And I think this is the exact type of team to play spoiler, where they're clearly good enough. They just had to figure mm-hmm. some stuff out. They were right there to actually making top eight last time. And I think that maybe while they're not seen as like a contender to win it, that round five comes around and Magnifico or Oxygen or Vitality is kind of struggling and they see yeah. Regan Ball up next. There's going to be a little bead of sweat dripping down maybe the side. Like, oh my God, relating wave online. Oh, Toxic, he's next up. Like, Acro, oh, 1v1. So I'm just saying, you got, you got a world championship coach and you've got that true spirit. I think it might be coming home. And by coming on, home, England. I mean, <laughs> and by coming home, I mean beating a team that won't make the major, even though they won't make the major. Let's go. You just, you just, Up you cannot coach. count out. You cannot count out RW. He is always there uh, to 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 upset and make a run. But listen, I've got one here, and I'm so glad that neither of you took it. I feel like it is just the obvious pick because what are they doing here? Why are they so low in the points? Moist. They are absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely the team that I think will have the best chance at upsetting one of these top teams. They should be in major contention themselves. You know, look, I know that there's no excuse for losing in the qualifier, missing out on the main event. I get it. And I'm not making an excuse. But they are absolutely good enough to be in contention with Oxygen and Magnifico and Vitality. They're absolutely good enough. So that is my choice for spoiler alert. I think Moist, um, you know, while they can't make the major, or at least it's unlikely, I think they certainly can uh, take that opportunity away from one of the teams that is in position to do so. So there's our picks for spoiler alert. Who will ruin the run for one of the European teams looking to make major? Find out next weekend. We got our next segment, Speed Taking, which we might need to rename to, I don't know, long conversation about a specific topic because we don't go very quick with it. But we're going to rock and roll once again. Uh, Let's do it. Obviously, the, the same uh, same stuff as always. We've got some takes from the shift court, if you're not in there, check the link below. Get in the shift, shift at Discord and uh, drop your take in there. There's a section called Rate Your Take or Rate My Take. And we'll be pulling some of those takes for uh, us to rate here on this podcast. Take number one, we're going to throw it to Yens. Copenhagen will be the most stacked land in RLCS history. I mean, it's really hard to say with regions outside of Europe. But with some top teams coming from South America, with some strong competition (laughs) from North America, um, I'm I'm just not sure about something like OCE. Um, They're just not there. No. Not. But, I mean, sure. Why not? (laughs) Disagree? I don't think it will be. I, I think, frankly, I think the new uh, distribution is just going to, like, in yeah, it yeah, a replacing a little bit weaker, replacing a North American and a European team with um, a, a, a SSA team and yeah. another Mina team. Maybe like EU NA five is close to Mina too, but obviously losing that European team yeah. in, in place of a team that will go probably L three is tough. All right, well, let me throw one at Michael here. Uh, we'll throw this to you because you, you talked you talked about this earlier. 
uh, Wavy will eventually be a top five player in North America? Um, I think top five is tough because mm -hmm. there's just so many players who have, like, I think Daniel's still getting better. I think he's really ascending into like that, what we all thought he was going to be. Beast mode doesn't seem like he's slowing down. First killer man still looks amazing. Chronic's not even, he's still in high school. Um, LJ, you know, seems to be really figured, seems to have figured it out. But I think, I think I could see him to be as being a sort of the, the, like at one point being like, almost like the rise of NA where maybe he's not like the individual pop-off player, but he goes to a team and he's able to play in a way that makes other t his teammates better around him. Yeah. And I think once that people start to realize like, Hey, every time this guy goes to a team that the players start playing better, I think that'll lead to him getting some top five shots. Um, so I'm going to say no, but I think he'll be a clear consensus top 10 player by next year and kind of float around that area. Okay. And then I got one for you. This is a great take. Whoever wrote this take is awesome and rocks and is the best. Okay, um, Michael. And that is that Rise is. is the greatest English player in the history of the RLCS already. Um, I think I got to say yes. It's between him and Devo, yes. by the way. Those are the two. Yeah. Um, obviously, Devo was, was uh, a very impactful player a very dominant player as well during you know there, there was periods of time where Devo was just unanimously the best player on earth um but I think there's for me there's just a little bit more like you know you you, you got to evaluate like strength of schedule mm -hmm. it's kind of that concept there and I just think this new open era of Rocket League is a more difficult era to excel and succeed in especially in the consistency area, um, that's what makes Monkey Moon and his dominance over such a long period of time incredibly impressive. If you went back to back, um, even to like top two in the world during league play, that meant that you did well in your eight best of fives that were league play, and then you did well in like, you know, a, a, a playoff bracket in your region, and then you did well at the world championship between like eight to twelve teams, and so. I'm not saying that that's not hard. That obviously is, but it's just, in my opinion, so much more difficult nowadays where you, I mean, you might, you know, you, you'll play eight best of fives over like an event and a half. Yeah. Right. You can play eight and series so, in one Swiss. <clears throat> you can go five, three. There you go. Win. So, um, yeah, one event. Yeah. So I, I think, I think that um, is, is like the main <laughs> thing for me. But then you look at Rise and his consistency, too. I think they outlined it on first touch of the seven lands that he's been to. He's been in the grand finals of five of them across how many different Insane. teams. And I think that that is incredibly impressive because it just shows that it doesn't matter what environment you throw him in. It doesn't matter what supporting cast you throw him with. He is just a winner. He finds a way to mesh with that team. He finds a way to find success with that team. And, I, you know, I think that... Um, that's what we're here to do. We're here yeah. to win. We're here to, 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 to go deep into the tournament, to, to find as much success as possible, and Rise consistently does that. So I, I think so. I think I'll agree with the take. Greatest English player in RLCS history. Who would be the next one, though? Maybe apparently Jack. Yeah. I mean, Joyo, I think, because yeah. he made a major final and won a Milan, but he also did it with Rise, so it's like... Yeah. And I, obviously, if you do all UK, then it expands to Scrub is probably the other one you're, you're really thinking of, but he's not British. He's not English. So. Yeah. Um, but English. Jens, I got one for you. All right. Yep. Chronic, Lacron James has been the best player on Gen G in the fall split in totality. Or sorry, split one, not the fall split. I was thinking about they won the fall major on me. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know. He's a great really? support player, isn't he? Great second, uh, it's kind of secondary, secondary yeah. playmaker. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That's way to put it. Right, he's not not always a third man, but mm -hmm. um, he just has such a stacked roster. It's so built <laughs> like a super team that to say that Chronic is the best player, it it almost seems unreal. But he might be because he's been uh, very consistent on this team, mm -hmm. right? We've seen the other players expect more out of them and then maybe not always be there so um i will agree 
that Chronic has been the best player. Just because of consistency. All right. You like uh, that with Cron James. Cron James. One of my favorites. Um, okay, <laughs> let me throw this to Michael then. M80 disbands during the transfer window after a disappointing split. A uh, hard disband, no, but I think they should be in the market for glue because it feels like they were missing some glue, and that's why they kept getting figured out uh, mid-tournament. Um, you just use all the buzzwords of the Rocket League yeah. esports. Community. So yeah, the thing is, is they needed to boot camp uh, while also uh, EU is better than NA. No, um, yeah, I think they just need a they need a player who who plays for the badge a little bit. Um, and you know, it's no 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 disrespect to any of the players; it's just not their play style, right? I mean, we don't say that first killer isn't good because he hasn't won anything because he's not a glue player, right? We say he's amazing, but he needs a certain type of team around him. Same with Monkey Moon. Um, and I think with Jor, I think two of those three should stay together, and the other one should maybe go find another team that maybe can cater to their style better. And then I think everyone will be happy uh, because I think they just need like a a a. a Noli, not Noli or Arsenal specifically, but like a Noli Arsenal type yeah, player yeah. who will just like zero boost challenge and steal boost and like get 98 points in a game because they that's what the team needs. Fair enough. Kept it pretty short this time, fellas. Good job. So I'll, I'll, right. I'll take this final one here. Oh, Power wait. I thought I gave you the second one. My fault. I thought I gave you That's okay. One. Power make top eight at land and have a hard fought loss in the quarterfinals. No. Disagree. The speediest take in the history of speed <laughs> taking. Because they I mean, won't lose be in the quarterfinals Anytime, or because they won't any, make top eight? No, they're not making top eight. I, I would love to be wrong. I mean, I think they could, I, I actually think they could definitely get to that round five. I think they're going to be strong enough to, to battle their way through. But I think when you get to that round five, like you, you look at all these regionals, that's when it gets intense, right? Like there's no more, you, you just, you're not going to get a favorable yeah. game. It's going to be tough. And it's definitely going to be that way at the major. It's going to be like so, LG, OG, Rule yeah, 1, absolutely. power, and Like a complexity. complexity. It's yeah, going to be tough. Like... Yeah, it's going to be tough. So um, I think you guys I mean, are underrating complexity. Huh? I think you guys are underrating complexity. I don't think there's six. True. I think there's seven. I think like if, if five, but only five not, teams make it to They could definitely to end up in round five. Two, two. I mean, what's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, realistically. They're going to beat the French four? Yeah, and then then there's also G two and, and Falcons and Falcons who kick their ass every time they play. Them. And I just seven. don't think they're so far behind Furia. So yeah, if yeah, you have, no. If you have Furia going really far and maybe even going for three zero, then I don't think you should. I didn't I, say that. I, I feel like their ceiling is much higher than than complexities. Um. Yeah, I just mean like. I think that they're going to. I think they're going to make. I would pick them to make bracket. I just don't. But think... I, I would. I mean, Fury could be around five too. I, yeah. that, that's mainly my point. Is I think what I think Power has the 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 fire power to make it to that round five. And I mean, who knows? They could, of course, get an upset and and get into that top eight. But I, Sam, I, I don't think so. And I would Sam love to be doesn't... wrong. Anytime OCE, anytime they go deep in the tournament, it's always fun. That's but right. yeah, I don't see. Listen, that Listen, Sam. Sam doesn't like seeing fever. You know, Fever has given Sam some fits before, so complexity shows up against uh, against power. Maybe actually, they're they're not even a Sam team, really. So never mind. Disregard. Yeah, but I I, I mean I'm anticipating like the the two seeds from Mina Sam. They could be in round five. I think three and four from NA could be in round five. I think you could see. I think you could see. You might see both OCE seeds. I think either of them could go round five. I would be surprised to see one of your top two seeds from NA or Europe go round five, but I guess anything could happen. Uh, I could see G2 doing it. I could see them stinking it up, going one, two, and then just like winning out and like getting to top eight and then losing in the quarterfinals. Yeah. And then I we have to skip a few podcast weeks so I can recover. <laughs> yeah, just you have to face the tribunals. For... Uh, it's okay. In that world, JNAP's top four, so I get to come in. Like, he, he's never going to die. <laughs> All right. Well, we got uh, we got one more thing that we want to talk about here before we start closing things out. We got some payout issues with Psyonix, and this is not really necessarily a new thing. I mean, I've definitely seen throughout history, seen CRL players complain about it. We've seen uh, like tier two players complain about it. And, you know, I think the problem is now that we're starting to see more players be more vocal about it. They're taking to Twitter. 
Um, and it's obviously players that have a very big audience as well and are finding a ton of success. And you just, it strikes you as odd. So there was a, um, a thread that got posted on Twitter. And so here, here's my understanding, and, and you guys correct me when I'm wrong, but Life is Cool, a uh, big-time content creator, commentator in the French scene, was doing a stream. They're discussing some different stuff, and Zen's mother posts in their uh, in that Twitch chat that Zen has not received anything from um, Spring Split last year, which is obviously a significant amount of money. And on that Twitter thread where it was screenshot and someone posted the uh, you know like a summary of the conversation, I guess Vatira replied, and then his mother replied as well. And so it kind of looks as though some of the players, or maybe all the players, y'all help me out here, are not paid some until they are 18 like there's oh, money right. that's set yeah. in a, a specific location that they're like yeah, they're not given that money to just trust, yet it's set I here believe. yeah maybe a trust or i don't i don't know the, what the yeah, word so they're for, setting but... up a kind of a bank account to just deposit for that money to go into um mm -hmm. which then will unlock uh, as soon as the player turns 18 because gotcha. with underage players that it, that is it's tough and there are so many in rocket league where you have players at 15, 16, 17, earning a lot of money, um, but for tax what? reasons, uh, finding it really difficult to receive that money. So sure. then uh, Selnix will, or, or Epic or whoever is doing that now uh, will set up an account um, with them to make sure that that money gets unlocked um, as soon as they turn 18. But there are problems with that, first of all, mm -hmm. because apparently... In the case of Fatira, Fatira's mom said that they called the bank and that deposit couldn't be found, which is alarming. Um, yes. But also there were some tax forms that needed to be handed over and that took months. And that means just that the money is just frozen, basically, um, which which uh, you don't want to see. You don't want to yeah. see that. And. There are, I mean, it's not exclusive to the underage players either. You know, there are players that are of age that are having delayed payments. Um, Exotic is an example that allegedly has not been paid for winter major. Um, I can tell you that I have seen, uh, I think it's Furlash or potentially a CRL player. I can't, I can't remember exactly who it was, but um, they posted that they were pursuing their money, which is like you go onto your Epic dashboard and then you can claim your prizing. Um, I've actually gotten to do this through some content creator tournaments and stuff. Hey. So, um, top, top 128 you, you, qualifier one. I, 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 yeah, I got to go claim my prize there for that too. 40 bucks. But yeah, you go in and you claim. And so, but we've seen where the money doesn't populate or the claim doesn't populate. So the player can't claim it. But then the player is receiving an email that says your prize is due to expire on X date. So there's just issues here with the system. There are some miscommunications or, you know, things may be plugged in wrong as far as, you know, information on the back end or whatever. I, you know, it's over my head. But the problem is there's money that's owed to these players. And, and for whatever different reason, it's not making it there. And that's obviously problematic. Yeah, and it's caused to buzz mainly in the French community, which, of course, is a large yeah. part of the Rocket League community. Not the group you want to be, <laughs> um, you want to piss off. That's not right. really. Uh, Atto came with a solution. Uh replying to that thread saying that you just have to keep spamming them emails and it'll work itself out. Somebody will fix it. Um, yeah. And oh, now I don't remember if it was Rise or Patera or someone else replying to him, mate, I've told you this yeah. a million times before. Uh -huh. That doesn't work for everyone. Um, so it probably depends on who receives that email over there. I guess yeah. so, but even if you send it to the same people, maybe it just doesn't right. come through, like or it doesn't get. Maybe resolved. they were fired. <sighs> yeah, honestly, that's true. <laughs> like there's a lot of layoffs. I mean, <laughs> for for me, it's like I don't know about this. I guess I, I wasn't. I didn't know as much about the scene before. I guess Epic, just because I've been working with Shift. But was this an issue before Epic? Was prize money always an issue? Like a sl yeah, slow payouts. Yeah, era? absolutely. Okay. Slow, yeah. yes, um, but now where it seems that money may not like yes. be in the, in the right accounts, that's something yeah. I'm hearing for the first time. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's just uh, it's you know, thank thank goodness that a lot of the times the people that are winning the big money are also paid a salary, 
Uh, so yeah. they're not, you know, especially the ones that aren't living at home anymore are still getting a, a monthly income and they're not relying on it. Um, but you know, Man. it's just a, it's a bad look, you know, it's always it is a bad, bad look and it's certainly got to be more difficult because they're paying out to so many more teams this season, right? Yeah. Like dropping that prize down all the way down to top one in 28 in a couple of regions, top 64 in the other. So, but if, if it's just as easy, I mean, I'm sure it's not as easy, but if like you're depositing it through an Epic account, I feel like it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, like, I, I don't know how to do it. I wouldn't, I don't know how they do it, but I, I, I can't imagine that it's that hard to just like put money in someone's Epic wallet because there's an Epic wallet on the Epic game store. Same way you have yeah. a steam wallet, right? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's where it is though. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's tied to your Epic ID, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it should be going um, into your bank account and then you get people with foreign accounts, right? Right. Like French. Yeah. Um, they would, especially for large sums of money that someone like Fatira might receive, uh, might have some tax forms to, to hand in or some things yeah. to clear before actually being able to unlock uh, those kind of accounts. So th there's definitely some struggles just because the bureau bureaucracy is there and, and mm -hmm. the financial system is complicated. Um, but when it's such a such an issue that so many people can relate to within the community, yeah. uh, well, then it's a little bit alarming. Well, I think the bottom line is, you know, there's no doubt that it's difficult. It's an international competition. You're paying people all over the place. It's got different rules and whatnot, but um, it's got to be taken care of, right? Yeah. Like the, the, it's part it, of the, it just has to be, part of the it deal. has to be resolved or else, I mean, why, I mean, why would the players compete if they're, you know, not guaranteed what they are supposed to be guaranteed? When you say yeah. that you're paid for, uh, you know, placing these places and then you don't get paid for that, that's obviously a problem. So. Especially your best, the most famous, the best, the the ones that, you we, know, because it, it feels like Epic uh, sees esports as a marketing product more so than a competitive ecosystem. And which so it doesn't if have the, to be a bad thing. Yeah. yeah and, okay. but I, what I'm, what I, what, why I say that is because uh, if the players that are the biggest marketing draws, such as Zen, mm -hmm. uh, to your game, uh, it is not good if all the people that only watch the RLCS because of Zen and maybe only picked up Rocket League because they're a fan of Vitality or they just saw yes. clips or whatever are now finding out that he doesn't get paid his prize money because if they don't even know that much about the game, they just tune into Vitality. Why would they? Why would they have any respect for the game? Like, yeah. oh, like he just yeah, goes out yeah. here, he's doing charity work. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a bad. It's just it's not. You don't yeah. like. I can't imagine how hard it is to claim your money as a bubble player, as a college player, if the best, most I'll, visible players in the As a bubble player, world. I'll report back to you. Yeah. <laughs> let me know. Let, let, let us know about your experience getting paid out by the LCS and well, how it compares to the I think it should be easier Zen. because it's about different amounts of money. Like uh, yeah, below a certain broke. threshold, <laughs> like a couple of hundred euros or dollars, yeah, that should be manageable for financial institutions. And above that, it becomes harder Dude, with taxes and everything. You said you got manageable we to, money. <laughs> do, uh, we need to... Uh, yes, let's pull up Wikipedia. We got an earnings check. Oh, earnings check. <laughs> well, I don't have a you Wikipedia said, page. Well, so. for players like you who have manageable money... S small but for amounts. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. It's right. It's right. We're, uh, it's right. It's right. Well, That's the, the so new funny, issue man. would be that the, the accounts, especially with the, the underage players... Um, but then Exotic chimed in and says that yeah. he hasn't been paid for the Winter well, Major, absolutely. which is a year ago. I mean, I've seen Atomic talk about it. I've seen Fiber talk about it. I've seen a, a whole slew of different cre uh, creators, players. <laughs> um, yeah, every few months a player just similar. tweets out like, I still haven't gotten paid, ha. Huh? It feels like it's just yeah. like a, it's routine at this point. And, and I'm going to say this too. Unfortunately, that's actually fairly common around the space. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, I've talked about some of the creator events I've, I've participated in like twitch rivals they'll just straight up like you play you'll be obviously live on a stream and then it just won't connect and like for on their side they just don't even have any record or documentation of you being a part of the event and i'm like okay well let me submit this and this and this and let me show you because you owe me some money so yeah, yeah. It, it sucks but like i said earlier you know i, I can understand the, the difficulties of it but ultimately as a business you've you've, you've just got to come through like that's what you promised that's part I'll of your product and, and you got to make it happen so Hopefully those things get resolved. I know that there are uh, people working to collaborate and, and get all the stories lined up, get all the people uh, organized and, and, and trying to address the issue. I know some of the players' agencies are taking steps to make yeah. sure that everyone gets 
in particular uh, Prodigy. Yeah. Yep. Prodigy. So Jerome. hopefully that will be resolved, but it's just one of the laundry list of things that I think Epic need to clean up after this season um, or, or even during the season. So hopefully, uh, a I tiny, mean, hopefully that, that... a tiny bit of, of uh, hope, a little bit of light arising is that we actually got some adjusted dates for the second major yeah, it's not yeah. a location yet uh, but we did get some dates uh it's a week earlier than was originally written down in the rules so it's yeah. now 20 to 23 uh june um yeah. instead of the last uh, weekend of of yeah. june what? so there's that the, there is the, that and you're right that it's promising you know, seems to be there, there that they're working on organizing that right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and there, there are plenty of things to criticize and, and, and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't criticize, but there are good things Absolutely. as well. One of the things that we have um, as a community, we have uh, been frustrated in is communication and, and obviously giving those dates and, and um, you know, communicating that, that date adjustment for major two is, is a step in the right direction. That reply from the rocket league esports account to tour sauce and power their open letter that they wrote, I didn't necessarily like the response that they gave, but I like the fact that they responded and it was yeah. a public acknowledgement of, hey, we see this. This is our policy. We'll work with you, it, you know, if possible. So steps, baby steps, little tiny baby steps, Big but steps, steps towards the, uh, the positive direction, which we, you know, we can appreciate that as well. Absolutely. Gentlemen, any closing thoughts here as we uh, finish up split one? I mean, we're fixing to roll into the uh, Europe Regional, which is all by itself here on the second weekend. And then we've got a little bit of break time before we head to Copenhagen. Are either of you planning to go? Yes, I will be. I will not be there. I will be covering the major four shifts together with uh, Faulty Martin, who will be my photographer for, for those few days. Uh, so that's, that's going to uh... be lovely. Um, there's some personalities at the scene. Hopefully I can get the Kevin interview in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm confirmed to have media access for the Saturday and Sunday, the crowd days. Uh, yeah. I am not certain about the other days, uh, the, the Thursday and Friday. Uh, might come down to me just visiting the Counter-Strike Major, which happens just a few meters over. <laughs> and I have tickets for that as well because I got them oh, last no. year. Um, so, nice. uh, yeah, Jens has movie. to go to the CS yeah, Go I have, Major. I have to go to the CS Major. Oh. What a bummer. Yeah. Oski, well, Oski, Archie, Ixo, Snasky. You need to get my boy Hoodie to the major. That's what I'm saying, Lock fellas. Come in. on. Sorry, excuse me. Come Lock on. the heck in. in. Okay? Yeah. No, but Top they, they, four. They, look. Come on. They look good. They look good. I mean, obviously, it was just quals, but they handle business. The thing is, you know, obviously, I get to see, and I saw that first event um, qualifier, and it was not very clean. You know, it was very shaky. I mean, Team 3... I mean, I hate to say this, but they dogged us. They yeah, dogged beat the brakes off. You know, yeah, I saw it too. It was not good, man. <laughs> and, and no, no shade to Team Three, but if you're gonna if you're gonna look to qualify for majors, you cannot be getting dogged by Team Three. You just can't. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm feeling more optimistic. You know, they they look very good in the last event. They're uh, on the they up. handled this qualifier clean, composed. Um, didn't drop a game. That's what they need to be doing if they want to be up there towards the top of Europe. So we'll yeah. see what happens come Friday. They've I mean, got to play well early in the Swiss if they want to make it. And that, that rings true for Magnifico, Vitality, and Gentle Mates as well. You cannot be flubbing early on. And when I say that, what I mean is like you need to 3-0 yeah. or 3-1. Like if you go 3-2, yeah. you're yeah. already setting yourself up GGs. for a tough run. So Welcome to Vatira Hell, buddy. <laughs> Enjoy <laughs> the crib. Yeah. Well, they, they gave their fans uh, a heart mm. attack and then another one and then another one. But yeah. Oxygen, honestly, sixth place right now. They not just bad. have to be two teams. Right I mean, there. it's not impossible. Right yep. there. They're right there. Yeah. We'll see what happens uh, on Friday. So see you at it's a major. Gonna a, <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. I would love to be. I mean, uh, Germany last year was the first time I've ever traveled internationally. Right. First time I've ever been to Europe. Um, obviously, it was a great time. I'm super grateful for auction sending me. Um, sent me for freaking 12 days, too. So I got a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. It's great. And I mean, man was an awesome experience. I feel like yeah. anytime, and, and I'm sure people that travel frequently can echo this, but anytime I go somewhere new, I feel like my... Yeah, you're like, my brain grows, there's like so my much to, there's so much to yeah, see. Yeah, there's just so much to, you know? okay, so here, all right, I'll, I'll say it here. So I was nervous about flying internationally and I realized maybe 
in hindsight, I shouldn't be all that nervous, but like, I, I'm worried, like, is anybody going to speak English? I <laughs> certainly don't know German. Like, yeah. I, am, am I just, am I just out to dry? Like, I don't know. I'll be typing on Google Translate, I guess. <laughs> so I'm worried about that. And I, I fly where I live. There's no international flights. It's a little rinky dink hillbilly place. So I fly from Arkansas to Chicago, Chicago to. Uh, O'Hare is a great airport. That's all I got to say about Chicago. It's, it's all right. It's all right. The wing I that I was it. in was pretty bummy, but. No, they have um, all those, like, you can lie down on, like, the big, like, comfy couches. Okay. Yeah, some of the wings have it, but not not oh, all of them. Brutal. Mine did yeah, it. I, I walked through the you. nice ones, I know. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but I, I flew to I flew to Frankfurt, and then Frankfurt yeah. was supposed to go to Dusseldorf. Frankfurt is there at the end. May, maybe the biggest airport in Europe. It's, it's well, oh, okay. no. You have London, of course, but it's massive. Yeah. So I get there. In Chicago, that's an eight-and-a-half, nine-hour flight, right? Well, obviously, I don't have internet or anything. So when I land, I get all these notifications where my flight from Frankfurt to Dusseldorf was canceled. It just Ooh. doesn't exist. And so I'm like, oh, great. It's over. I can't speak English. I'm at this place. I'm nervous. Wait, like, you what were, do I you do? You were flying from Frankfurt to Dusseldorf. Yeah. Yeah. That seems silly. There's a train there. I don't know. It only yeah. takes like. Yeah, but you remember, minutes. this it's like is a NA, flight. NA, tra yeah, NA travel. So, like, the, you, like, you got to adjust to knowing that the trains that's run. The, that's and a that, like, train. But th that's what I was going right. to say is. Yeah. Look, I go to the desk and I'm like, yeah. hey, uh, my flight's canceled. What do I do? They're like, type for a second. They're like, okay, here, you got a train ride. Yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's just not how it like, works. I'm good. In the I, just, I just, yeah, I just go and they're like, yep, yeah, just gra grab your luggage. Here's your ticket. I'm like, okay, sweet. Yeah. So no, Germany never, is great I've for train even... travel as well. I've been a couple yeah. times just on my own from city to city, hostel to hostel. It's, it's lovely. Oh, man, it was beautiful. It was so much fun to just, uh, like, <laughs> I feel silly because it's like such a probably a, a small thing for people that are used to it. But I, I like I've never even ridden on train before. Ah. I've taken a subway in New York, which was also the first time I've ever done that. But I've just never been on a train, so it was a really cool experience. And, sure. and to you know bring it back to where I was going, like anytime I get to travel, I'm super excited and grateful to get to do that, even inside of uh, America as well, because um, you know where I live and and the area surrounding where I live, which has been where I've traveled for sports or whatever growing up is all very similar um you know culturally um you know like landscape geographically is all very similar as well so you know flying over to la was really cool mm -hmm. um you know my, my first time that i ever traveled as an adult was newark season seven yeah and um so yeah I, i'm 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 yeah. grateful no, for those I opportunities lucky that, I get. that i get to experience so many uh, european yeah. cultures Mm -hmm. I'm only two hours away by train from Paris. I mean, uh, the same from Düsseldorf. It's lovely. Yeah, it's but very maybe cool. I, I, maybe for the major two or or worlds, I will be visiting outside of Europe for the first time. Maybe maybe some oh, NA trip. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. None of these absolutely. Pale, these all pale in comparison to the beauty that is Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> you silly, you silly Americans and Europeans wouldn't understand what what, what Yellowknife Yukon looks like. Okay. Or Northwest Territories looks like. Right? Oh, yeah. I'd love to go to Canada for in, our LCS. Entire towns in part of, parts of Canada living in one building. Surely, surely we can get an Ontario land. Toronto, yeah, we one. did Montreal, Toronto right? Would be sick. But Toronto, uh, <laughs> it w I mean, listen. They're the, 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 like, you guys just know. If there's a Toronto land, I'll make sure you'll never forget it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep you to that mischievous laugh <laughs> i got some all right ideas. well we'll see what happens this coming weekend with the final event of split number one actually let, let me do this rlcs 2024 split one qualifier three for europe will happen this weekend stay tuned it's going to be exciting we've got a showdown here to grab those final three spots um, casey is locked but it's going to be a fight to see who can grab them um, we appreciate you guys listening in. Again, join that shift cord. Link will be down to, down below. Leave some comments. Let us know what you think. Tell us if you disagree with some of the takes from speed taking or our spoiler alert. Give us your prediction for what goes on over here in Europe. Uh, but that's going to conclude Shiftcast episode number six. We appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.